So I definitely went through to the kitchen, poured myself a cup of tea, left it to steep, went to do my lipstick, but I didn't have time because I was like, I don't want that to get too strong. Um, so I did like the top half of my lipstick and then I went and got my tea and put some milk in it and I came through here already to film and I was like, I have not finished my lipstick. I look like I'm trying to be Queen Amidala and that's not really the look I'm going for today. So I know you guys can't see all of my t-shirt, but it says, babe, you got this. So hopefully I do. So this is my second coffee video. So I'm gonna do a series of videos dealing with um, kind of common questions about coffee and common misconceptions about it. So today I wanna to speak about what is strong coffee? What does that mean? Is stronger coffee better than weaker coffee? And yeah, let's just get into it. So strength is kind of one of the most common ways that people tend to talk about coffee. And I can't count the amount of times that um, someone has come in to one of the coffee shops I've worked in to buy some coffee beans and they've asked how strong are these? And this kind of question usually comes from the fact that supermarkets tend to put strength numbers on all their bags of coffee. So it might be from like one to five and five is the strongest. What these tend to actually indicate is how darkly roasted and how bitter the coffee is. So up at five, you're gonna have the most bitter and probably the most darkly roasted coffees. But using the word strong in this way is a little bit misleading because how dark the coffee is roasted isn't the only thing that affects how bitter it is. There are actually tons of different factors which can affect that. Specialty coffees are almost universally roasted lighter than standard coffee. And this is so that you can get all of the sweet and fruity flavors out of it without them being overpowered by the kind of darker, roaster, bitter flavors. So if you put a specialty coffee on this kind of supermarket scale of strength, it would actually be really low. It'd probably be at like one, which is kind of in conflict with the idea that stronger means better in supermarkets. But what makes it slightly confusing is that specialty coffee drinks are actually a lot stronger than standard coffee drinks. Because for an example, a latte, there's gonna be a much higher ratio of coffee to milk in a specialty coffee than there is in the kind of big chain industry standard places like Starbucks and Costa and that kind of thing. Even if two lattes, one from a specialty place and one from you know, a standard chain place like Starbucks, they might both have two shots of coffee, but the standard ubiquitous chain coffee is likely to have a lot more milk in it. So it's gonna taste a lot more milky and a lot less like coffee. It's gonna be a lot weaker. So really it would make a lot more sense for supermarkets to label their coffees with how light or dark the roast is instead of the strength. Because strength actually isn't about the beans themselves or how they're roasted. It's actually about how much coffee compared to how much water or milk um, that you use in your drink. So specialty places tend to start with a double shot for every coffee and they control how much water or milk gets added to that to make the different kinds of coffee, lattes, americanos, flat whites, long blacks, um, by choosing what size of cup it's gonna go into. It's pretty common for specialty places to use six or eight ounce cups. By contrast, a venti Starbucks cup, so the largest they've got at the moment, although I think they're coming out with a larger one soon, is a whopping 20 ounces. To get a similar ratio of coffee to milk or coffee to water as a specialty coffee, in that cup you need five shots. So because specialty coffees are stronger, they're actually harder to pull off because there's less milk there to hide behind. So the onus is on the barista to get the espresso tasting great because if it's not great, then it's gonna be a lot more noticeable in a specialty latte than it would be in a much more milky kind of Starbucks style latte. So the stakes are a bit higher and mistakes are gonna be a lot more noticeable in six and eight ounce coffees. But when you get it right, it's so much better than your milkier counterpart. So those are the facts about coffee strength. What about the meaning of it? There is something weirdly aspirational about drinking strong coffee. And why is that? Drinking stronger coffee is associated with being cooler and, I don't know, I guess probably more of a hipster, but like probably more intellectual. Drinking weaker coffee that's more milky or more sweet is kind of associated with frivolity and teenage girls and just kind of silliness and it's kind of seen as a bit embarrassing. So I wanted to speak a little bit about that. And you do see this kind of thing with other foods as well, you know, you've got um, probably the extreme of it with kind of hot sauces. So like you've got, you know, um, milder things and then you're seen as kind of cooler or more edgy or more 
powerful for being able to stomach a really really spicy hot sauce. Um, you have this in kind of alcohol as well, you know, it's, you know, Alcopops and Wicked and, you know, like cheap alcohol that's like maybe mixed with kind of sugary drinks. And then you've got, you know, drinking spirits neat, which is seen as like being really tough. Like the idea that you can handle it makes you cooler. And I think this is really interesting because in a lot of these things it's about how much you can tolerate a really intense or sometimes unpleasant flavours. Whereas in Speciality Coffee our aim is always to soften everything, it's to get like the most sweetness and the most fruity notes and like a nice like maybe a little bit of bitterness but like in a kind of balanced way. Um, so actually drinking a Speciality, like a really well dialed in espresso, shouldn't be like a trial or like an achievement, you know, because it should be easy to drink. Whereas bad coffee, you know, that's maybe really darkly roasted and really over extracted and, you know, tastes like ash, that is going to be, well, I, I don't know if it's an achievement to drink it. It's, I guess, I don't even know why you would do it. I don't know why. I guess you're drinking it to prove you're tough instead of to enjoy it. And like this kind of stuff intersects in weird ways with like gender and stuff like that. And I'm not going to get super into that because there's the idea of kind of girly drinks, you know, like caramel latte with like whipped cream and extra, I don't even know. I don't, what, what do they put in those? Like, is there nuts or I don't know. And girly cocktails like, you know, cosmopolitan and things that are pink and stuff like that. And then you've got kind of masculine drinks. So uh, like is espresso coded masculine? I don't know. Um, but then you've got things like, you know, like whiskey and beer and like, there are strange connotations in these things. So in mainstream coffee culture, you've got kind of, you know, big milky lattes with cream and stuff, which are kind of on the like the sort of silly, girly end of things. And then, so what would that make the coolest coffee? I guess it would be an espresso, because it's the most concentrated. But does this make any sense whatsoever? In some places of the world, it's traditional for men to drink espresso, but then add like four sugars to it. So is that like more or less masculine or cool? If you add four sugars to kind of mask the bitterness of an espresso, is that cooler or less cool than just having it in a latte and using the milk to do that? The specialty coffee people obviously have their own ideas about what a proper coffee is and what a kind of silly or pseudo coffee is, but because all of their drinks are smaller and stronger than the kind of mainstream counterparts, I think the connotations are actually a little bit different than in mainstream coffee. I don't think a speciality barista would feel any kind of embarrassment about drinking a latte. Because for us, you know, we've put in the time and effort to make sure the espresso tastes good and then it tastes good with the milk. So it's just another kind of way to enjoy coffee for us. So all this conjecture that I'm doing and spouting at you is obviously based on my own experience in speciality coffee, but it is also entirely possible that it's a bunch of bullshit. I'm just one human, I've got my own biases and my own narrow experience, but I'm kind of interested in this and I want to know what other people think. I'm just interested in that kind of element of competition in ordering your coffee and that there's something normative about it. Like the harder you drink your coffee, the cooler you are. And like the more milk and sugar that you put in your coffee, like the weaker you are. And I think a lot of baristas are kind of disapproving of putting sugar in coffee. And I think that people often think it's for this reason because they think it's, oh, it's not cool to drink sweet coffee. And I think some people probably do think that. For me personally, it's not about having an issue with people wanting to drink something sweet or, you know, that's what they're in the mood for. But it's more about the fact that, you know, I and we have worked really hard on making that espresso and that coffee taste really good, really well-rounded and bringing out, you, you know, the taste notes. Of and to then put sugar in that kind of just masks all that. Like the sugar is always going to overpower any natural sweetness um, that the coffee has. That's exactly why people use it when coffee is too bitter. It's because it masks that. Anyway, those are about all my musings on this for the moment. <laughs> I'm going to keep making coffee videos in the future, so if you liked this one or you found it interesting and you're not already subscribed, then you should probably do that because then you will get those videos when they happen. If you're one of the people that is subscribed to my channel for writing related things and you don't really give a shit about coffee, that's fine. There's going to be more writing stuff coming. That's not going to stop at any point. You just can skip these. I don't mind. Okay, I'll speak to you later. Bye. And speciality people. Speciality people. Speciality people. I'm a special person. Uh -oh. This is my dog. She's annoying. As always. But she's so cute.
Lots of places. Okay, okay. I mean, you can go sideways if you want, that's fine. Um, look what, what? Oh, no, you don't want to go that way. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a little monster. and FAQ. I don't have to deal with your shit. Oh, okay. Are you gonna come and sit with me? Common questions and frequently asked questions. My seven, seven. Then you can put your little feet there. What a time to be alive. The sniffles. <laughs>